Welcome all of you to the story of the great battle between the land and the sea, where Aquaman and the Kingdom of Atlantis fights the Justice League for the very first time. The US Navy submarine USS Defiant, is on patrol beneath the ocean, when it happens to be too close to an armada from Atlantis. The Atlantean ships attack, and the submarine sinks to the ocean floor. Aquaman, captaining the lead ship, coldly orders it abandoned while the Navy soldiers are struggling to survive. The Justice League leads a rescue and retrieval team to the submarine before the crew suffocates, where they confront Aquaman and his troops. Superman, Wonder Woman and the Green Lantern, are being attacked by the Atlantean ships, which makes them attack back. They are able to take down three Atlantean vessels before being confronted by the Atlantean King himself. Aquaman grudgingly allows them to rescue the crew, but says that the submarine is now his property. Green Lantern angrily objects, saying that the submarine's nuclear material is too dangerous, but Superman says that they have to rescue the crew before it is too late. After the rescue mission is complete, Superman urges Aquaman to visit the surface world, and air his grievances before an upcoming conference of world leaders. Aquaman is skeptical, but promises to consider the suggestion. Back in Atlantis, he listens to the counsel of his brother, Ohm, and the head of his military, General Brack, both of whom say that Atlantis has the technology and the manpower to wipe out the surface world, if required. But the Atlantean king refuses to listen to them. In private, he confers with his queen, Mera, and looks fondly at his baby son. Above all, he wants to make a safe and prosperous kingdom for his son, but wonders whether there isn't a peaceful way to do it. Aquaman goes to the surface and visits the World Conference. Unfortunately, his approach is less than diplomatic, after causing a small chaos in the city, Aquaman arrogantly insists that the surface nations must cease their intrusion into and pollution of the oceans. Outraged, the world's leaders say he is being unreasonable, and he walks out in anger. Superman tries to convince him to stay and be more moderate. Aquaman continues to walk out. Just then, when Aquaman brushes aside a group of reporters, a sniper fires a bazooka rocket which hits the pavement in front of Aquaman, gravely injuring him. Aquaman is rushed to the hospital in critical condition, by Superman and the Justice League. The doctors are unsure of how to treat him. As always, being the mysterious rescuer, Batman appears and orders that he should be moved into a saline water tank, which allows his natural healing abilities to work. Back in Atlantis, word comes that Aquaman has been injured, possibly killed. Ohm, brother of the king, reassures Mera, and assumes the crown and royal trident in his brother's absence. Aquaman regains consciousness, and claims he wants to catch the attacker. Batman offers his help, and tells Aquaman to trust the League. The League decides to try a ruse to catch Aquaman's would-be assassin. Putting the word out that they are moving Aquaman to a specialist facility, they wait for the assassin to try again, and he reveals himself, Deadshot. He realizes he has been fooled by the Aquaman, when he was attacked by the Batarang. On the gurney lies John, the Martian in disguise. But Deadshot has a well-prepared escape plan in place. The real Aquaman decides that he's recovered enough, and is returning to Atlantis immediately, over Lantern's objections. After a long, hard chase through the sewers, and then the streets, Deadshot is finally caught by Superman. He admits casually that someone hired him to kill Aquaman, but refuses to say who. Batman takes over the interrogation, and a few seconds later, Deadshot cracks, much to surprise of the Wonder Woman. Let me give you one word of advice. Okay. I'll tell, I'll tell. What did he say? You don't want to know. Deadshot claims that he doesn't know the name of his employer, but he was paid in gold. Examining the gold, Batman deduces the antique coins and crosses are Spanish doubloons, obviously salvaged from a sunken ship, which means that the one who ordered Aquaman's assassination is from Atlantis. Aquaman returns to Atlantis and is stunned to see Ohm sitting on the throne. Ohm says he is sick of Aquaman's tolerance for the surface dwellers, and has decided to take matters into his own hands. Brack's soldiers surround him, revealing that Ohm and Brack are behind the plot, and the King of Atlantis, is now under arrest by his own soldiers. 
The Justice League hurries to Atlantis to warn Aquaman, but they are ambushed and taken as prisoners by Brax soldiers. Ohm, the brother of Aquaman, says that he plans to destroy the surface world to keep Atlantis safe, and sentences them to death by drowning. They are held in a chamber filling with rising water, kept passive by headbands that make them unable to use their powers. Just then, Queen Mira appears and knocks out their guards, and frees them. She says she suspects her husband is still alive, and asks for their help. Elsewhere on the ocean floor, Aquaman is chained to the side of a rock outcropping, above a lava fissure. As he struggles to get free, Ulm arrives and shows how he plans to ensure his succession to the throne, he has brought Aquaman's infant son, and pins him to the rock beside Aquaman. With a mocking goodbye, he uses a blast from the trident to send the outcropping on a slide, down the cliff face toward the lava. Aquaman wrenches desperately at his chains, managing to free one arm, but the other is held fast. He grabs the sharp metal buckle from his belt and hacks at the chain, but without effect. As they draw nearer to the lava, and his son cries, Aquaman raises the buckle, and brings it down with a roar. At the royal palace, the League reports to Mera that Aquaman is nowhere to be found. Just then, the king returns, carrying their son. Mera embraces him and he hands her the baby. It's then that she looks down and gasps in horror, his left hand is gone, the stump of his wrist wrapped tightly with the baby's blanket as a tourniquet. Aquaman then tensely asks where his brother is. It's time for some revenge. While Aquaman is being fitted with a prosthetic, Batman calls from the surface, and tells them that the temperature at the Arctic Circle is rising dramatically. If it continues, the ice cap could melt, causing catastrophic flooding all over the globe. Aquaman resurfaces from his operation, and reveals the source of the trouble, the Doomsday Thermal Reactor. He admits that he had it built as a weapon of last resort, if it ever came to war with the surface world. But he never armed it, instead, Ohm has done that, using the nuclear material from the submarine, and activated it. Aquaman swears to stop his brother, and the League insists on aiding him. At the Arctic Circle, the League is joined by Batman in the Batwing, before clashing with Brax forces. The Atlantean soldiers manage to hold the League at bay, but Aquaman breaks through, as do Lantern and Batman. In a glacier cavern, Aquaman reaches the reactor and confronts Ohm, who has the advantage, with two good hands and the royal trident. Ohm destroys the controls with a blast from the trident. While Aquaman engages him in a brutal fight, Lantern and Batman try to shut down the reactor. Batman quickly determines that he will have to shut it down manually from the inside. Lantern creates a body shield with his ring, and Batman climbs inside the reactor. Ohm deliberately wanting to doom the surface world, tries to stop Batman, but is held at bay by Aquaman. As they fight, Ohm loses the trident, but lightly wounds his brother with a knife. Suddenly, the ice beneath them crumbles, and Ohm is left dangling off a ledge, with Aquaman standing over him. Ohm begs for his brother's help, but Aquaman simply picks up his trident, coldly stating, I believe this is mine. Ohm loses his grip and falls with a scream into the abyss. Batman closes the manual shutoff valve, and the reactor shuts down. The world is safe once again. At Atlantis, Brack and his men plead that Ohm forced them, and they would never have otherwise gone against their king. Aquaman coldly orders them to be locked up. With the League present, Aquaman reflects on his mistakes, but resolves to go on working for peace between Atlantis and the surface world, for the sake of his son. Atlantis is many wonderful things. But forgiving, it is not. It was said by Queen Mira. Atlantis, officially the Kingdom of Atlantis, is an underwater kingdom, located somewhere deep in the Atlantic Ocean. It is home to the ancient, isolated, and highly advanced Atlantean culture. Originally part of a larger Atlantean empire, the present-day Atlantis is now one of four surviving kingdoms after the Great Fall. As Atlantis is heavily isolated from the surface, the only way into the kingdom is a colossal glowing gate in front of an ancient bridge that is heavily guarded by both stinger squadrons, and shark cavalry and enforced by a massive array of powerful hydrocannons. Atlantis was founded eons ago by King Atlan, 
and eventually grew into the most powerful and technologically advanced nation on the planet under his leadership. Even today, it is truly a wonder, and a mystery to be solved. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.